Hello GRE lovers. I hope all of you are fine. Today we are going to start geometry and in that we are going to start line and angles. So first of all, what exactly is a geometry? Geometry is a branch of mathematics that deals with shapes, angles, sizes and various dimensions of things. First of all, we are dealing with various shapes and in that we'll deal with angles, various sizes and various dimension of things. For example, in one dimension geometry, two dimension, three dimension in a coordinate plane. So that's all we will discuss in geometry. So now the important thing is why, why geometry is important. The reason is geometry accounts for roughly 20 to 23 percent of overall GRE quantitative reasoning. And if I further break this down, in two-dimensional geometry, it covers around 15%. In coordinate geometry, it covers around 4 to 4.5%. And in three-dimensional geometry, it covers around 2 to 2.5%. And by combining these, it roughly covers around 20 to 23% of overall GRE quantitative reasoning. Now let's quickly move to the main topic of today, that is line and angles. First of all, what is a line? A line is a fundamental building block of geometric figure and it is a straight one-dimensional figure extending infinite in both directions without any thickness. It is one-dimensional figure that's why you have only one dimension to measure that is its length. It don't have the height or thickness. So if I consider this as a line L so this will have arrow in both direction and extend infinite in both direction. Now the next thing is line segment. A line segment is a part or a piece of line having two endpoints. Or we can say that a finite portion of a line. For example, if I consider the same line L and if I consider finite portion in that, that is presented between A and B. So it is a line segment. So we have line segment AB in the line L and this can be represented as AB simple or AB with a bar on that. So these are just two notations to represent a line segment. Now the next very important thing to discuss is angle. Angle is also a fundamental block of geometry just like the line. And it is basically a figure formed by two lines that share a common endpoint. And Usually the measurement is done in radian or degree, but for GRE we only require to know about a degree. GRE don't cover anything in radian. So GRE don't require us to remember to know about the radian. Now if I consider this, these two segments, line segment OA and OB are combined at point O. So there will be some angle at point O. For example, in this scenario the angle is 60. So how can I represent this? There are various notations to represent this. This could be represented this way that angle O is equal to 60. This could be represented that angle OAB is equal to angle BOA. Doesn't matter if I consider A first or B first. This could be represented with the cap on the O. And I also represent this as angle O as it is. So these are four common ways of representing angle at point O. Now, let's discuss about if I consider a straight line, the angle on any side of straight line must add up to 180 degree. For example, if I consider this as a line, and on the upper side of line, the total angle must add up to 180 degree. And if I consider the both side, this total add up to 180 plus 180, which is 360 degree as of a circle. Now, if I see this question and the examiner asked me to find the value of A, how can I do that? I know the sum of angle on uh, one side of straight line is 180 degree. If I add both A plus 130 must equal to 180 degree. And if I subtract 130 from both sides and find the value of A, that will be 50 degree. Now, the next thing is, remember one thing. As per GRE convention, you can't assume anything in one dimension or two dimension geometry unless specified. 
just like in this scenario if I consider this line and this may seem that this is a perpendicular to this line first of all what is perpendicular perpendicular is a line that touches the that is this line at 90 degree so this may seem just by visualization but Jerry this is a common trap we can't assume anything in geometry unless that is specified so for perpendicular sign this uh, is a way of presenting a 90 degree this is a box which will show a 90 degree and this could be a simple way there could be another way of representing the 90 degree but the common way of presenting a 90 degree is using this so this ray is perpendicular to the line below and the 90 degree is known as a right angle there are two other angles as well if the angle is less than 90 degree that is between 0 and 90 that is acute angle and if the angle is greater than 90 degree that will be obtuse angle so basically there are three angles right angle equal to 90 degree acute angle less than 90 degree and obtuse angle greater than 90 degree now the next thing is about the bisector as the name itself states that we are bisecting a thing uh, into two equal parts we are dividing into two equal parts just like if I uh, draw a segment and I can divide a line into two equal parts and that uh, line could be perpendicular or could be at any angle and just like in this scenario first of all what is a bisector it is a ray basically a ray a ray mean arrow on one direction ray segment or line that bisects an angle line a line segment if I consider this this is a line and a line segment is bisecting that and in this term this is bisecting at 90 degree that's why and two dash line shows that these two sides are equal on either side of the bisection this side and this side are equal so this is a perpendicular bisector because this is bisecting at a 90 degree now the next thing is the angle bisector first of all we see a line bisector now in angle bisector this is exactly the same thing but now we are dividing the angle into two equal parts just like in this we have angle AOB is equal to 60 degree and if I want to bisect this angle at O that means we will have 30 degree on both sides so OC is a angle bisector of this angle AOB now let's talk about intersecting lines so consider a scenario in which two lines are intersecting at a point so we can see that whenever there is an intersection of two lines there will be four angles at that point namely W, X, Y and Z now there are certain properties regarding this angle which are very critical for solving questions for lines and angles first of all if I consider W and X W and X are opposite angles these are sometimes may be called as a vertical angles and sometimes may be called as a vertically opposite angles so but commonly you will see that this in, these are known as a vertical angle so first of all what are vertical angles vertical angles are opposite to each other when two line crosses each other so here two lines L and M crosses each other at a point and at that point two opposite angles are known as the vertical angles just like X and W are vertical angles likewise if I talk about Y and Z Y and Z are also opposite angles vertical angles and vertically opposite angles okay now we have seen that Y and Z are vertical angles and W and X are also vertical angles and another thing is these angles are equal and there's another term which is known as congruent we will discuss that in detail in the triangle portion but for time being remember that vertical angles are equal so that Y and Z are equal and X and W are equal as W and Z are on one side of straight line and Y and X 
or on other side of straight line so these must add up to 180 degree that's mean these are supplement to each other supplementary to each other so z plus w is equal to 180 degree and x plus y is equal to 180 degree now if we talk about if we take a very basic example to understand this if i get, if we are provided with a question in which includes uh, four angles 70 w z and x first of all if we just remember what we discussed so far about the vertical angles so 70 and z are vertical angles and are equal likewise x and w are vertical angles and equal so 70 is equal to z and x is equal to w and w plus z because they are on one side of a straight line and 70 plus x must equal to 180 degree so from that x will be equal to 180 minus 70 which is 110 now 70 and z are vertical so z is equal to 70 x and w are vertical so as x is 110 that's when w will also be equal to 110 so we have find out all of the four angles all of the remaining three angles in this now let's talk about the parallel lines so all we need to know that parallel lines are two lines if they never intersect and there will be a constant distance in between there are another way to explain this using the slope equation which we will discuss in the coordinate geometry but for this line and angle scope we just remember we need to just remember that that they never intersect each other and is always a same distance apart now l and m are parallel lines and as we can see that there is a same distance throughout between them and sometime the in exam you won't see the statement that a line l and m are parallel instead you will see these uh, error in both of the lines that shows that these lines are parallel and the notation to represent a parallel line that is L is parallel to M as shown below now let's talk about transversal transversal is a line that intersects two or more than two lines so if we have two lines L and M Transversal will be this T line which just cuts these two lines at two points and for each point there will be four angles so if we consider these two points there will be eight angles. Now let's see a scenario that transversal cut two parallel lines. So line L and M are parallel and transversal T cut those two parallel lines so there's two points so there will be four angles at each point namely 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 now there are some uh, more things which we'll need to discuss first of all angle 1 and angle 5 are corresponding angles first of all what are the corresponding angles corresponding angles are the angles that occur on same side of transversal line so these are the same side of transversal line so angle 1 is equal to angle 5 and angle 2 is equal to angle 6 likewise angle 3 is equal to angle 7 and angle 8 is equal to angle 4 so they have four pair of corresponding angles the next thing is as we discussed earlier that angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles opposite angles of the intersecting lines angle 2 and 4 are vertical angles angle 5 and 7 are vertical angles and angle 6 and 8 are vertical angles so we have four pairs of corresponding angles and four pair of vertical angle now if we combine both we can say that angle 1 is equal to angle 3 which is equal to angle 5 and that is equal to angle 7 likewise angle 2 is equal to angle 4 angle 4 is equal to angle 6 and angle 6 is equal to angle 8 so based on the corresponding angles and vertical angles these are two interpretations which will be helpful in dealing with the questions and remember in this 
uh, statement we have provided that line L is parallel to line M. But the in exam, if that is not mentioned, so in that scenario we can't find. So most of the time you will get trapped that the line are not shown parallel, but we assume those are parallel and got the question wrong. So in geometry, specifically for the one dimension and two dimension, never assume anything unless specified. Now there is another property, very useful property that the ratio of the intercepts of two transversal on parallel line is the same. What that mean? So if I consider three parallel lines L, M and N and they are two transversals which are cutting at different positions and this notation shows that line L is parallel to line M and line M is parallel to line N. So based on that and these W, X, Y and Z are intercepts. That means W is this length, X is this length y is this length and z is this length. Now we know these four lengths and we know that these three lengths are parallel and two transversal are cutting those. So as per theorem, the ratio of intercepts of two transversals on the parallel lines is same. That means the ratio w over x must be equal to y over z. And as we know this ratio, we can come up with the multiple ratios concept. So there was a question relevant to this in uh, when a student got an exam that uh, there is a provide you value of w, x, y and there is no value for z and you are asked to find the value of z given that three lines are parallel and there were true transversal cutting those. So simply using this ratio concept and uh, using this concept you can easily find the value of z. So just remember this, first of all, all of these lines are parallel and two transversal are cutting them. The ratio of intercepts on of two transversal on parallel lines are equal, is same. So W over X must be equal to Y over Z. And based on that, you can use the ratio concept to come up with the multiple expression further. Okay, so this was all about the line and angle concept. And in the next video, we will discuss the questions relevant to the line and angles to get a better understanding of line and angle.